So you want to add weight to your bench press instantly? Now, this video is not clickbait. Now, I built myself a bench press of over 570 pounds. Now, in today's video, I'm going to teach you the techniques and the cues that I used to build myself a massive bench press so that you can too. Let's go. In soft touch, her leg drive is on the entire time. She is driving her legs back. She's pulling her chest to the bar. The barbell is stacked directly down the wrist and the elbow when they're pressing. It's not sitting in the back of the hand. It's not sitting so far forward that it's gonna fall out. You'll see that their wrists are back and the barbell sits straight across the heel of their palm and she's driving herself backwards. Okay, leg drive is generated backwards. If we generate leg drive upwards, what happens is your hips or your butt lifts off the bench, which is not legal in competition. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube. Cult Strength. Cult Strength, that's right, baby. Now today, an incredibly special day today, we have a complete bench press tutorial. Now this video is a follow-up to an extremely successful video I posted around six months ago. That video was titled, Increase Your Bench Press Instantly. Now that got 237,000 views so far. A lot of really good comments, a lot of great feedback. People found it extremely helpful. So today, we're gonna to make a 2.0 version. This is gonna be more comprehensive, more informative, but my goal for this video is to deliver this information in a way that is easily digestible because there's a lot of coaches and influencers out there with a lot of great knowledge, but sometimes they struggle, um, you know, getting that across to people is a little bit complicated. So today we wanna to keep it really simple but extremely effective. Now, a little bit about me. My best bench press ever is 260 kilograms, 573 pounds. I'm currently working towards a 600 pound bench press. That's my lifetime goal. Now, I'm not only a big bench presser, but I also have a squat and deadlift of over 900 pounds. Okay, so quite strong. Now, we're lucky today to have this beautiful lady here doing some demonstrations. Now, I find it much easier to deliver the information, okay, in a more precise way when I'm not actually doing the movement as well, okay, obviously. So you're gonna have something pretty to look at while I feed you information and knowledge to help you build your bench press. Now, this is a complete comprehensive tutorial. We're gonna cover everything from head to toe, from how you grip the bar, from how you should brace, where you should touch the bar, what your elbows are doing. We're gonna cover all of that today. This is the most comprehensive bench press tutorial that you're gonna find on the internet, no doubt. Now, before we get started, please be sure to pick up your bench press programs from my website, coltstrength.square.site. We have a lot of great programs on there, not just bench press programs. I have just released a brand new deadlift program, the Deadlift Devastator, that is live now, but we have a brand new bench program coming in the next week or two, which is really exciting. But we're gonna get stuck into this now. We have a lot to talk about. Make sure you like this video, drop a comment, and subscribe. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go, baby. All right, baby, now before we begin, I just quickly wanted to note that although she's extremely good to look at, she also has a PB bench press of 100 kilos or 220 pounds, it's two plates aside. Now that was when she was taking her powerlifting seriously. These days, you're more concerned about being a MILF, which I'm all for, but we're in experienced hands, okay? So she knows what she's doing. She's achieved big numbers using these techniques. Now, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is our pre-lift ritual, okay? We need to have some habits and a routine that we set up for ourselves that we execute every single time we do this. Now, to be optimal in this movement, it's about repetition, repetition, right? But not just aimlessly. It's about perfect repetitions. Now, the rep starts when we set up. We need to make sure we set up the same way every single time so that we have a better chance of producing a better product every single opportunity we get to do a repetition, okay? So we don't take any part of this lift for granted. You're gonna have a much better time if you focus on a setup, okay, a nice consistent setup versus just doing something random every time you bench press, okay? You're gonna have a much higher chance of success and a much better time. So speaking of pre-lift ritual, now what I recommend, okay, everyone's different, but if you don't have one, then use this. 
Now, I want you to set up for me on the bench. I want you to lay down on the bench, but slide back behind the bar for me. Okay, so she's going to lay down on the bench press here. She's behind the bar, which is exactly where I want you. Now, you can sit up behind the bar, or you can lay down behind the bar still, but I want you behind the bar. Now, what she's going to do first is she's going to set her grip. Now, before we go too far into the grip, I quickly wanted to just touch on how should we be gripping the barbell? Because a lot of people have this question, right? Now, I like to grip the barbell using what is called a bulldog grip. Now, a bulldog grip is kind of confusing to explain, okay? Because it involves both internal and external rotation at the same time. But we're using this grip to, for two reasons, I believe. We're trying to maximize tension, which is extremely important when we're trying to build a big bench press, okay? Tension is key for a big bench press. But one of the other major reasons for using this grip is where it allows us to have the barbell in our hands. That's important, okay? The way that our body is structured, our forearm, our wrist, and our hand is structured, when we can get into a bulldog grip, we're allowing the barbell to sit along the heels of our hand, okay? The hard, bony parts of our hand. Now, we want the barbell to be sitting on that heel when we're pressing, okay? So how do we achieve that position? If we're thinking like this, right? Our hands are out in front of us. What we want to do is externally rotate from the shoulder, okay? So we externally rotate, we turn out, but from the elbow and wrist, we turn them in. We internally rotate, boom. We crank them in and we push the outside bottom corner of our palm into the barbell, okay? So we're externally rotated here, but we're internally rotated through the elbows and the wrists, achieving that bulldog grip and that perfect position. Okay, that's how the best bench presses in the world bench press. The barbell is stacked directly down the wrist and the elbow when they're pressing, okay? It's not sitting in the back of the hand. It's not sitting so far forward that it's gonna fall out. You'll see that their wrists are back and the barbell sits straight across the heel of their palm and travels down the forearm bone to the elbow in a straight line. It's stacked and it's a powerful position. So that's a really important note before we even get started, right? So with the grip, you're gonna set your hands. Now, there's a maximum legal width we can use in competition, 81 centimeters apart. That's the black line on this barbell. That's optimal and that's the most efficient, okay? But you don't have to use such a wide grip if you're not comfortable. Everyone's a little different. But if we wanna to work towards something, we wanna to work towards having our index finger on that black line for maximum efficiency with the bench press. But if you're a little bit closer for now, that's okay. Just make sure it's not too close and perhaps over the next six to eight weeks, slowly edge them out a little bit further until you're a little wider and a little more comfortable in that position. You may be stronger now with a closer grip, but if you can learn to bench press properly, you will be better with a wider grip. That's the truth. So, hands on the bar, set your grip. Easy. Okay, hands on the bar. She's comfortable there for now, which is fine with me. Now set your feet in a position where you think they're gonna stay. We don't want them so far away, right? that you end up too far down the bench. We don't want them so far back that you can't actually get into position. We wanna find the right position. It's different for everybody, so play around with it. But we wanna make sure that we don't have to adjust them too much. We wanna build tension and build tightness, okay? So she's found the position of her feet. She's got her hands on the bar, okay? Her pre-lift ritual is pretty much complete. And now she's gonna swing under the bar, not right now, not right now, but she's gonna swing under the bar next, and we're gonna talk about how to initiate the leg drive, which starts pretty much now, okay? It doesn't start when you take the bar off the rack. It starts pretty much as you're setting up. We're gonna talk about that, and what I believe is probably the most important thing with the bench press is the position of the scapula or the shoulder blades. That's next. All right, now we're gonna talk about getting into position underneath the barbell and the checklist that we need to go through on the way there. <clears throat> so she's got a hand set, she has her feet set. Now, when it comes to leg drive, and even 
what are our feet doing? It's completely up to you whether you want to bench with flat feet or if you want to bench with your toes or your heels off the ground, right? It depends on the federation you compete in. For one, if you compete in powerlifting, um, if you're not a competitive powerlifter, it really doesn't matter what you do, okay? So that's personal choice. But the principle stays the same. It doesn't really change. So feet are set. Now you're gonna slide underneath the barbell for me. Now what's important here, right, is as we're sliding underneath the bar, we're making sure that she is squeezing her shoulder blades together and down as hard as she possibly can. Okay, so if you can come back for me and do that one more time. Now pay attention, as she swings under the bar, she's lifting herself off the bench, her feet stay still, but as she's lifted herself off the bench and she's swinging under, she's taking that opportunity to squeeze her shoulder blades together and down, and she digs them down into the bench press. She's digging her scaps down, she's squeezing her traps down, into the bench press. Now, simultaneously, this is kind of the tricky part with leg drive. We need to turn this on at the same time. So with her legs, what she's actively doing at the same time is she's driving herself backwards, okay? Leg drive is generated backwards. If we generate leg drive upwards, what happens is your hips or your butt lifts off the bench, which is not legal in competition. So leg drive is generated backwards with force backwards. Now what she's doing here with her shoulder blades, she's driving them down into the bench, creating an arch, okay, through her thoracic spine. She's creating extension through her thoracic spine, going into her scaps, which is, I like to think of this as like a power circuit, okay? We have a complete circle of power happening right now. She's driving back off the bench, but she's not sliding backwards because she's got those shoulder blades digging down into the bench which is creating tension, okay? So because she's got all that force driving back, but she's not moving backwards, she's created all that tension throughout her body, which is that tension I was talking about that's really important when we bench press, okay? So as we're setting up, we wanna focus on getting the leg drive on, her quads should be on, obviously she's laying here for a long time, so she's not on right now, but if she was going to do the lift, which she will do in a moment, you will see everything on, okay? So quads would be on, she would be squeezing her shoulder blades together and down as hard as she possibly can. And I like to think of this, right? It's a great cue. Pull your chest to the ceiling as high as you can. Imagine someone's got a hook through your chest and they're hoisting you to the ceiling, okay? Find the highest point on your chest because that's pretty much where you're gonna bring the barbell down to when you do a bench press rep. But she's not gonna do that right now. She's gonna sit up for me. Sit up for me. One more time, I want you to go through the, through the setup. We're gonna go from the beginning now, okay? Quickly before we move on. So we find our foot position and our hand position. Okay, now as you swing under the bar. Now another thing to remember is as you're swinging under the bar and before you're unracking the bar, that's when you're gonna turn your, turn your bulldog grip on, okay? That doesn't have to happen right here. That can happen more so before you unrack the barbell, okay? So right now, she's just got her hands and her feet set. She's gonna slide underneath the barbell, picking herself up, digging her shoulder blades down, squeezing them down, driving her heels towards the floor. Now, what's important is to note is you wanna to aim to have your mouth underneath the barbell. So the barbell is over your mouth. That's probably a great spot to be before a repetition. You're not too far down the bench where you have to overreach to get it off the rack and you lose your position, but you're not so far back off the bench that you're gonna hit the rack when you go to press, okay? So you wanna find the right starting position for you, which is gonna depend on your levers, but make sure you're not traveling too far. Now, before we go ahead and talk about the execution of the lift, the breathing and bracing, where we're gonna to touch, and the elbow position, etc., you're gonna to have to go ahead and like this video, drop a comment, and subscribe. Do that, and we're gonna move on now. Let's go. All right, baby, now we're gonna go through the execution of the lift and what we're focusing on, you know, while we're bringing the bar down to our chest and what's our body doing, okay? Because people are often confused on this topic and it's quite simple. So we'll go quickly over the setup. So you've got your feet in the ground, hands on the bar. We don't need to worry about setting the bulldog grip just yet. As I said, we can do that after. Slide underneath. Okay, scaps down, digging them down. Don't turn on just yet because we need to talk for a moment. now. One of the big things people talk about and they ask me is what should they be doing with their elbows? Should they be tucking them, you know, because they're flaring or should they be flaring them more? Or are they too tucked? You shouldn't have to think too much about 
your elbow position, okay? The scapula or the shoulder blades will dictate the elbow position in my opinion. So if you have your shoulder blades retracted, which means pulled together and depressed, which means shoved down, your elbow should be in a fantastic position, okay? You couple that with the bulldog grip, with the internal rotation on the bar and all that tension, you're gonna be in a fantastic position provided you have all of that. Now, if you still feel like you have your elbows too flared, okay, then perhaps you're not able to retract and depress your scaps optimally. In that case, maybe we could cue to tuck the elbows slightly, okay? Because we don't want to be too flared, that's risky, but we just don't want to over-exaggerate any tucking, okay? We want the elbows and the wrists stacked underneath the barbell. When we start to tuck the elbows, we can go into external rotation where the, the joints are no longer stacked, okay? And it's not a very powerful position to press in. We want to be stacked with the joints underneath the bar. Now, in regards to where on the chest do we bring the barbell to, as I spoke about a little bit before, when we're bringing our chest up as high as we can with that cue, okay? As we squeeze and, you know, retract to press our shoulder blades, pulling our chest up as high as we can, most of the time you're gonna find the best place to touch is the highest point you can kind of find on your chest. Now this lovely lady has implants in her chest, which isn't really an advantage with bench press, but you know, we'll see where she touches, where she's comfortable. Now I assume it probably won't be uh, on her breasts. I believe it'll probably be just below on the hard part of the chest. That's normally, you know, if people didn't have implants, the highest part of the chest, okay? That's probably the most optimal position for the bar path. Okay, so what I want you to do here, for this first, demonstration and explanation we're going to go over this but we have other things to touch on as well such as the bar path the starting position before we even start the repetition so unrack the barbell form we get into position you're tight squeeze everything's on okay take a big breath for me okay now just focus on the scaps don't worry about the elbows just bring the barbell down to your chest three repetitions to the highest point soft touch lovely perfect and again Good, one more. Leg drive is on the entire time. Back on the rack, lovely. Put it back in. Cool, you can sit up for a moment for me. Now, as you can see there with that demonstration, she wasn't tucking her elbows, they weren't flared, but her focus, I'm assuming, was on her scapular position. Okay, so they were retracted and depressed, her chest was up nice and big, and essentially you're bringing the barbell down to the, or the shortest A to B, right? Is straight down, and that will essentially have your elbows in the right position. So if you can, tick off literally these little technical cues, you won't have to worry about that one at all, okay? Because you shouldn't have to worry about it. It's taken care of if everything's working together, okay? Now, in regards to where you touched on your chest, fantastic, that was exactly where I kind of expected it to be, the highest point just on the hard part there, yeah? Just below the nipple line? Absolutely, pretty cheeky. Now. In regards to breathing and bracing, there's a couple of things we can talk about here. There's an advanced method that I like to teach, and there's also the basic way, and both are fine for you probably now. You can always work towards the more advanced one. So just quickly, the more advanced one is we take our breath before we unrack the barbell, but we actually hold our breath for the duration of the set, okay? We don't breathe out at the end of each repetition. We hold our tension, we hold our tightness, and we perform each repetition whilst maintaining that position. Alternatively, you can do the one where you reset every repetition, which is where you would pull your chest up, you do your rep, breathe out, breathe, breathe in, chest up, repeat, right? It's not as efficient. So if you would like to try the advanced method, it's quite simple. It just takes some conditioning and getting used to. But what you do is you simply take a big breath just before the barbell's unracked and you hold your breath for as many reps as possible. You may not get through the entire set when you first start, but aim to get through three to five repetitions and increase that each week. There's small likelihood of you passing out. It's much harder to pass out when you're laying down, when you're standing up, right? But don't push it too hard initially. Just get comfortable with doing a few reps at a time. But that's the most effective way to breathe and brace because the pro to that, right, is that when we hold our breath, we don't lose position. When we lose our position under a really heavy load, let's say you're benching four plates, 180, whatever it is, right? Three plates, heavy two. Okay, if we breathe out, at the top, it's very hard under load to get our chest back up to that perfect position. It's almost impossible. We're better off getting that position before we unrack the barbell, holding the breath and doing our best to hold the position without letting it go in the first place. That's the most efficient and effective way to bench press big numbers and your most for 
surefire way of staying injury free. Is there anything you want to add to that or you feel pretty good so far? Good points. Okay, now I think what we need to cover now is the bar path. So I'm going to change the camera angle just so you can see a little bit more on the side. Um, maybe it's something I might even demonstrate because there's a little cue that I want to use. So what I will do is at the end of this, I'm going to give you a little demonstration as well of an exercise that you can do with an empty barbell to find the correct starting point for you. It's really simple, really effective. I know you're going to love it, but we'll move on now. Let's get it. All right, gang, now let's talk about the bar path and finding the correct bar path. Now, I'm quickly going to demonstrate the bar path during some actual repetitions for you. Now, after that, I'm going to show you an exercise that you can do by yourself, right? And it will help you find the exact right starting point for you because, again, everyone is slightly different. Okay, only slightly though, but everyone's a little bit different, but it's going to help you find the right spot and you're going to understand immediately what I'm talking about. It's like a cheat code. It's one of the best pieces of information I ever came across and it's helped me tremendously. Now, one thing to understand about the bar path is that it's not exactly straight up and down. Okay, there's, on a perfect bench press, there's gonna be a slight arc backwards, okay? Very slight curve backwards. Only slightly, you don't need to exaggerate it, okay? But what I like to think about is just moving the barbell from the shortest path possible from point A to point B. Okay, so we're touching to the highest point of the chest, which means that we need to bring the barbell down our body somewhere relatively close to hovering over the top of that, right? It may be slightly off, as I said, we need to allow for a slight arc, but we need to think about bringing the barbell down to a pretty close, you know, proximity to that. One of the biggest mistakes I see in the gym are people starting with the barbell too far back, okay? And what you will find is, and you can agree with me in the comments, is that your first rep is always a lot harder than the second, third, and fourth rep because you tend to find the groove. But the first one on the way down feels painfully heavy and painfully slow. And that's because you're not starting in the right position. Okay, so we're gonna get the barbell. We need to set up for me quickly. So you're already laying down. So leg drive on, scaps down, chest to the ceiling. So you can take a big breath, perform three repetitions, okay? Now watch where she starts the bar from. Okay, it's almost gonna go straight up and down. Three reps for me. One, love that, perfect. Two, good, tension, love it. Three, good. Four, back on the rack. Love that, you can sit up for me now. So a couple things to note there, right? That's lovely, that's really nice. You can sit this side of the bar because no one can see you, you weirdo. Um, now, when it comes to touching the barbell on the chest, how hard should we be touching the chest? While you're learning this movement, or you know, at least while you're learning this movement, focus on a really soft, controlled touch. Now, there's multiple ways to do a bench press. There's the sink and heave technique, which I've done before, and it's really good. It has its pros, has its cons. Right now, I'm using you know, maximal tension and a soft touch, and I'm really enjoying the progress I've found from that. So right now, if I had to pick between the two, I would say I'm seeing better things happening from that constant tension, that soft touch. So I recommend that you use a nice soft touch. You think about bench pressing to your T-shirt. Don't let it sink into the chest. Maintain that tension during the entire press and the entire descent of the barbell. You're going to be able to get more repetitions in per set. You're going to hit rep PRs and then ultimately you're going to hit a new one rep max PR, okay? You put all these things together, it's the perfect concoction for a massive bench press. Absolutely guaranteed. Now, if anyone here that is watching this video watched my first video, let me know in the comments how much success you had with the first one because I'm sure it helped. I saw a lot of great comments and what I really want to achieve here is seeing people have bigger bench presses. That's my goal, okay? Yes, I like to sell my programs, that's how I make a living, okay? I'm gonna sell my programs on my channel. But what we need to really think about is not only a great program, but improving your technique, being more efficient, being a technician, okay? Those things are really gonna help your bench press, arguably more than a fantastic program. Now, before I wrap this up, before I actually do the demonstration for you, which is gonna be done by you, not me, I want you to just to perform three repetitions again. We're gonna change the angle slightly, okay? And we're gonna uh, just see a full execution of, of the movement. I'm gonna go over all the cues one more time. And then we're gonna do that last little exercise that I was talking about for finding the right position before you bring the barbell down to your chest. Sound good? 
Let's go. All right, gang, this is the final demonstration. This is the complete product. Let's go through the checklist. And remember, if you can just chuck a few of these things into your bench pressing, I guarantee you, you're gonna hit a PR. If you're not doing these things and you start doing them, you're gonna have success. So let's go, set up behind the bar for me. That's it. It's always very sexual how these women set up on the bench press, isn't it? It's very distracting. Yeah, it's nice. Anyway, feet on the ground where you want them, okay? So we want to make sure they're pretty much exactly where they're going to stay during the set. We can adjust them a little if we need to. Hands are exactly where we want them on the bar. Slide underneath the bar. Now we're focusing on retracting and depressing our shoulder blades, shoving them down to the bench. At the same time, we're shoving our heels down into the ground or we're driving our legs, so we're shoving ourselves backwards, okay? You're going to take a big breath. You're going to get that grip on the barbell. Everything's nice and tight. Chest to the ceiling. Hold your breath. Three repetitions, soft touch. Her leg drive is on the entire time. She's driving her legs back. She's pulling her chest to the bar. She's pulling her chest up to the barbell. Lovely, back on the rack. Perfect reps. It almost looks as if she's literally pulling her chest up to the barbell during the movement, which is the most efficient way to do that. If you think about maintaining position, maintaining that arch, maintaining that big chest, we want to think about meeting the barbell with our chest. We don't want that weight to start making us go flat and our chest sinking away. We want a big chest up nice and proud, and that's the best way to do it. Before we wrap the video up, let's go over this bar path exercise that you are 100% going to go and do at the gym the next time you're there. All right, now before we wrap the video up, let's go over this exercise that you will absolutely use to find the perfect starting point for you. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to lay on the bench. We're not going to set up for a bench press. We need to be a lot further down the bench for the sake of this. So if you can lay flat on the bench for me, bring your butt all the way to the end. Oh, that's it. Nice. Bring it down further for me. Shuffle down, shuffle down, about there. Now set your hands on the barbell where you'd normally have them. Perfect. Okay, now just bring the barbell off the rack. Empty bar is all you need, okay, and a bench. Now what I want you to do from here is slowly pull the barbell back over your face to your forehead, okay? Slowly, 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 you feel it get heavier and heavier and heavier. Yep, okay, now bring it back down to your chest. Now bring it back down to your stomach. Okay, slowly bring it down. It starts feeling heavier and heavier and heavier. Now from here, slowly bring it back very slowly to a point where the barbell feels almost weightless. About there. Perfect. That's your perfect starting point, and that's the position she started her repetitions at. Because if she was to go straight down from here, she's touching exactly where she would on the bench press. Okay, so that's a perfect way to find the starting point for you. Find the point where the barbell feels the most weightless. Put it back on the rack. Can you get it up? Yeah, buddy. Good girl. So that's that, right? That's really easy, and you should definitely do that before you start your next bench press session, and you'll see if you've been starting in the right spot. And if you haven't been, I guarantee you that first repetition, especially that first repetition, is gonna feel so much better, okay? We wanna be in the groove. When you're bringing the barbell down out of the groove, you're just copying so much interference and leakage of energy that it's just not efficient, okay? That's not a great way to bench press, and it can also lead to injury as well, okay? We're loading the muscles in the wrong way. We want everything stacked. We want everything efficient moving the barbell in the shortest distance possible. So we're talking about maximizing the bench press, right? So that's what needs to be priority. We need to shorten the distance from A to B. We do that by retraction of the shoulder blades. We create that thoracic extension through the upper back, chest to the barbell, okay? And then if we can maximize that wider grip on the barbell with our index finger on the rings, we've shortened the range of motion. You hold that tension, you maintain that technique, you have yourself a massive bench press. That's how it goes, isn't it, Donald? That's, a, that's how you got a two-plate bench. That was pretty scary. Yeah. That was a big bench. She was a strong girl. But uh, that's it. Do you have any, anything you want to add to that? No. That's no. Very thorough. very thorough. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You know, um, we had someone watch the kids so we could film it. You know, we wanted to be efficient. We wanted to get a good bench press tutorial out because it's been a little while and bench is going hot at the moment. A little peck, niggly strain. Um, but that'll sort itself out in a few days before my max testing, where we want to, you know, hit something nice and juicy on the bench. And keep in mind, we have the new bench press program coming out very soon as well. It'll be posted up just after I do my max testing. So that's really exciting. 
Uh, make sure you've liked this video. Make sure you drop a comment. Let me know if you've learned anything. That would be fantastic and I'd really appreciate it. So I really appreciate the engagement. So just liking and, and commenting really helps me grow this channel. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I have many other tutorials. I post many training videos, um, a lot of educational uh, content as well, things of value because that's what I believe in. And we, you know, of course, have something really pretty to look at most of the time. So that's a massive bonus. So thank you for being here with us today. Uh, until next time, I think you know what to do, baby. Go and work on your bench press technique, get a bigger bench press, and you'll get laid too. Let's go.